Hey, I'm Randy and I'm the Chief Audio Man. Here at the Chief Audio Man, we don't feel like audio equipment, amps, DACs, speakers, turntables, CD players, or transports, cables, or cable accessories should cost as much as getting a colonoscopy uh, when you don't have any health insurance. And you get, the, you get the bill with all the itemized lists like the equipment, personnel, anesthesia, all that. And that number down at the bottom, uh, your stereo shouldn't be greater than a colonoscopy without health insurance. And these aren't. They're the Cambridge Minx XL. They're little speakers. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's talk about the Cambridge Minx XL. Today's sponsor is Crazy Larry's uh, Cable Riser Adhesive. Hold on, I, I got too much of it. All right, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, so you get some uh, Cable Riser Adhesive, and then you kinda you build it up into a kinda little, little tent, and then you stick it on the ground, and then you put your cables on it, because we all know how difficult it is when some vermin get in the house and mess up your cable risers. Uh, that's why you can yeah, basically get a whole roll of it uh, and then replace your cable risers so that um, vermin don't get into the signal, the RF signal. Okay? Uh, it's uh, $800 for a roll of it, but it's really worth it because it makes it sound so much better. All right. <clears throat> Cambridge Minx XL. A little bookshelf speaker. All right. Let's talk about it. First, it's kind of pretty. Actually, it's not kind of. It's real pretty. The finish is glossy, kind of like a piano gloss. Okay, it comes in white and black. A little five and a quarter inch woofer, one inch soft dome tweeter. Spec at 50 hertz up to 20, 22 kilohertz or 22k. All right, eight ohms, 89 dB. All right, yeah, it looks good. It's got a rear port. Mm. Got some nice binding posts on that. Uh, the woofer is a doped paper woofer, okay? It's got a nice waveguide. Uh, the surround is kind of a rubbery material. Uh, they're sitting on top of the T15 speaker stands if anybody's interested, okay? They look good, they look good. They're little too, all right? They are, let's see, nine by six by nine and a half. Those are close. So they're very small speakers, perfect for desktop, okay? Let's talk about soundstage and imaging. Soundstage and imaging. Okay, so I tested these most of the time, like my heavy evaluation was when I was at my desk and I had these about 12 inches from the wall, slightly towed in, not directly towed in as far as the tweeter facing me, a little bit out. And uh, I, they were about four feet apart, four, five feet apart, and I was about three, four feet back, okay? Kind of like a scenario that I would think I would be in for you know regular desktop listening and you know maybe push yourself back a little bit. All right, so wherever I may roam, Metallica, 14 second mark, came out of the right speaker, came way right. Killing Strangers, Marilyn Manson, Off the Pale Emperor record. Really good, really good record, if you haven't heard it. In its entirety, it's great. Okay, so it goes... And it goes... And if, it's, if you got a good imaging, a good sound staging speaker, it should feel like it almost wraps around you. And I felt like that. So... Very, very, very good. Another great audiophile song is More Human Than Human by Rob or White Zombie. I think it was a White Zombie. Yeah, White Zombie, definitely. Anyway, it starts in the middle with a electronic noises. And it ping pongs back and forth. Okay. Um, anyway, there was no delineation between the right and the left speaker. It was very smooth. Started dead center left then right then back left great okay sound stage and imaging fantastic on the little cambridge audio minx xl let's talk about bass all 
All right, base I felt on these was neutral with a very good smooth roll off. Highway to Hell by ACDC. The bass drum at the beginning of that, really throughout the entirety of the song, should be real tight. It shouldn't sound thick or boosted or anything. And it was very tight if mm, leaning towards a little bit rich, okay? Intergalactic by Beastie Boys is the song that I use to determine how smooth a roll-off a speaker has. If your speaker gives the impression of just how deep that song goes, and the only way you really know how deep that song goes is if you're running, if you're listening to that song with a subwoofer on, and that subwoofer digs pretty deep, and then you turn the subwoofer off, you listen to your bookshelves or your speakers, and you kind of like feel, okay, how deep is this going, or what's the impression of the bass, all right? For their size and their woofer size, they had a great roll off. Bass presence, I used Killing Strangers by Marilyn Manson. And I've heard like beefier, more boosted bass, but generally with a very, with a speaker that has really good roll off, um, generally you can't kind of have both because you can't have boosted bass because when you boost the bass with port length or enclosure size or enclosure design, generally the roll off is much uh, steeper. For their size, for their enclosure size, I think they do a great job with bass. They're not bass cannons. They're not going to drop bombs on you. But for what they are, their bass is excellent. Very neutral. Tone, tonality, pretty good. Uh, the upright bass in, in So What, Miles Davis, kind of blue record. Good detail. Good tone. Good texture. Okay. For the price. 180 bucks, by the way. On sale. And they've been as high as like $299, okay? Usually they're around $230, but they're on sale for $189, okay? So, let's talk about mid-range. Mid-range. I, very happy with the mid-range on these. Uh, Shoot to Thrill by ACDC is a song that I often use with mid-range because I want it to be crunchy, but yet I want it to have body, which tells me the crossover is putting it in the right place okay mmm very good very good crunchy but also has body there will be time Mumford and Sons voices were detailed but again maintained body Adele or hello by Adele I used to say Adele by hello it's that's not the case at all it's it's hello this song names hello and then it's it's by Adele she's the artist her voice was very detailed very mm, smoky, but still had body. Yep, still had body. Acoustic guitars on Rooster, Allison Chain's unplugged album. Mm, maybe leaned a little bit thin, but overall the mid range was fantastic. And I feel like this is a much better mid range than the SX series. They have an SX50, SX60. Okay, great mid range. Really liked it. Very good. Let's talk about treble. Here's the story on this speaker. It's it's the treble, okay? And it's the treble clarity, and it's the treble presence. Because the SX series, and to be fair, I didn't hear the SX50. I tested the SX60. It's very difficult to say. They were not clear. The highs were rolled off, not present. Not on these, okay? And they're not boosted as far as being fatiguing in any way. They are clear. They are great. And from what I've heard, they reworked the crossover uh, from the SX50. And I, they didn't say it's a different driver, but I feel like I might be a different tweeter, okay? Bottom line is the 16th notes, Center Man by Nina Simone, very good, very accurate, very detailed, very believable, had crispness, had clarity, but also maintained body, okay? You could kind of feel the stick or envision the stick hitting the hi-hat. It just wasn't, you know, sometimes you can hear that on a speaker. No, it sounded sounded real. Uh, Another Way to Die by Jack White and Alicia Keys off of, I don't know, one of the 007 soundtracks. 
left speaker a piano comes in it's you know all the way on the right on the piano it's very high in the treble and it was do 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 very believable the piano was it, that's a fun song you should try it out the piano was very believable okay sounded very good all right oh here's another one uh scentless apprentice by nirvana mm off of that record up there um there's a lot of like metallic uh reverb distortion going on and it was really good okay some speakers eh, they kind of struggle with that song the, it gave a sense of air and the mm, the visceral mm, 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 mm. great song Love that song. What are my final thoughts? Final thoughts are this is a significant improvement over the SX series as far as neutrality. Great, great, great frequency response. I didn't feel like there's any bumps. I felt like there's extreme clarity, not like an AMT tweeter or a ribbon tweeter. But from a soft tweeter or soft dome tweeter, this is about as good as you can get, with maybe the exception of like the Yamo C93 II, but that's also a $400 speaker, $450 speaker. Okay? The price on this speaker is currently $179. All right? It's sold by Cambridge through Amazon. There's not a ton of stock of either of these, and I'm not saying that so you feel compelled to go out and buy these. What I am saying is this is the lowest price I've seen them. Actually, I was going to do the review on this a while back, but they actually went up to $299. I paid about $230 for them. So this is like $50 cheaper than what I paid for them. If you're in a desktop situation, I feel like this is a should be a very strong consideration for you. The other the other bookshelf or desktop bookshelves that I've tested um, in the size would be the mica rb42s i think these have much better treble than the micas the dolly specter ones um i feel like they're similar this one's a little bit bigger a little plays a little bit louder and it is also almost a hundred dollars cheaper and then the rp 400m by klipsch um that was a good speaker clear i felt like the mid-range on this one's better and again like a hundred dollars cheaper okay I don't think you can go wrong with the speaker if you're looking for a desktop solution. If you're looking for something um, in a medium-sized room, you're going to want to get a sub and you're going to want to put a high-pass filter on these. Uh, these are for desktop, small room, if you're only running them two-channel. Okay? Great speaker. Looks great. Sounds great. Priced right. I think the Cambridge has a winner at 180 Even at 230 I still think this is a pretty good speaker. The other speaker in this category would be the Emotiva B1 Plus. That's a great speaker. A little bit different sound signature, though. B1 Plus, extreme detail and clarity. Bit skipped, uh, scooped out mids, great bass punch. Okay, so a bit of a U-shaped curve on the Emotiva B1 Plus. I feel like this one's pretty flat. All right? If you want to support the channel, you can by subscribing and liking the video if you like it. Uh, I also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night, we have Zooms. We had one last night. It was a lot of fun, okay? Uh, you can also sign up for Amazon Music HD for free. You get three months for free. There's a link in the description. Click on the link. Scroll down to the bottom. Click Try HD. You get three months for free. I get a couple of dollars. These will be linked. If you click on the link and purchase them, I do get a commission off that. They're affiliate links, okay? So, don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu binge listen to your favorite streaming service vinyl records cassette tapes cds and fill your soul with happiness and with that i'm randy i'm a cheap audio man